The Happy Time Murders are looking to be one of the most divisive films this year. What's up everybody, I'm Josh Meek, the Uber Geek. This is Pretty Dece, your daily entertainment and pop culture show. And I saw Happy Time Murders, got a chance to actually see the film tonight. And it is the new movie from Brian Henson, the son of Jim Henson. And it's set in a Los Angeles where humans and puppets coexist. And it focuses in on a human police officer and her puppet former partner turned private eye. And the two of them are looking to solve a series of murders taking place. The victims of which are the stars of a classic puppet TV show in this world. So think something like, you know, Sesame Street. All the stars are, are getting murdered. They're trying to track down the killer and figure out what's going on. Now, as I said, this film is very, very divisive. People are coming away with very different thoughts about this movie. Vanity Fair calls it maybe the worst movie of the year. So Vanity Fair, not a huge fan of Happy Time Murders. Other people are coming away very positively with this film. It currently has a uh, whopping 27% on Rotten Tomatoes, but I've seen, you know, four and higher stars from other outlets. So there's a lot to unpack here. So clearly it's not a film for everyone. And while I didn't think it was a timeless masterpiece, I was very entertained. Certainly I don't think it is the, the worst film of the year. You probably come into this movie expecting a film that is just a puppet raunch fest, right? It's a, it is a, a, an, an adult film starring puppets. Typically when that happens, it is just, can we make puppets say the raunchiest, dirtiest things imaginable? Can they do kind of awful things that you don't expect puppets to do? And while there are plenty of jokes to that regard, lots of jokes and bits where puppets are doing kind of these, these awful things you wouldn't expect puppets to do, I think it's clear that, that Brian Henson wanted to show that he can tell any kind of story with puppets. I, I don't think that all the kind of raunchiness is really the goal of the movie. It's just sort of kind of the, the byproduct of telling that kind of, of story, that kind of like adult comedy using puppets. It's also very interesting that this movie is, is not just a, a comedy. It's also a just kind of straight up hard boiled noir detective film. It's actually su surprising how much of this movie is, is serious. How much of it is not played for laughs at all. How much of it is really trying to focus on like the emotional core of the, the main puppet character. How much you're really getting into kind of his backstory and his, his, all of his motivations and his, his thoughts and stuff. Um, it's, it's very interesting that they go very hard into that, that full on noir film, um, aspect of it, kind of outside of the whole kind of raunchy puppet aspect. And one of the coolest things about the movie is that it's not just a series of skits featuring puppets. The puppets aren't just stand-ins for the humans. If you took the puppets out of this movie, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense. Kind of the core of the movie requires the puppets to be there. And that's because the, the whole crazy world has this ridiculous history that they 100% buy into and just kind of tease at. They don't kind of tell you everything that's going on, but they, they do paint the picture of a world where puppets and humans coexist. We don't know for how, for how long that's been going on. We know that, you know, puppets have the drug of choice, which is just sugar. We know that puppet livers can, can be implanted into humans. We know that puppets can get plastic or maybe felt surgery. Um, so they kind of like drop in little like nuggets about what this world is like, what their history is like with the, this TV show where all the stars are, are getting killed. And, and, and you really kind of like realize that this is a world that's, that's you know, similar to ours in some aspects, but very different than ours because, because of puppets. So it's very cool. I love that they never play the world itself for laughs so they don't undermine their own uh, concept, their own premise. They kind of build the humor from there and they really make the puppets matter in the, the story as a whole, kind of the, the grander story as a whole. It's very cool and, and they are kind of telling an interesting story about puppets as second class citizens, making this kind of allegory to kind of um, minorities in, in the States here. 
it's it's heavy handed. It's very clear what they're doing, but but they're trying to tell a little bit more interesting of a story than just things like look at what the awful things the puppets can say. So I think it's very cool. Really, what the crux is going to come down to is whether you know if you if you like this film. If you don't, you're going to uh, kind of decide that on whether you think the puppets smoking and swearing and having sex and doing drugs is done just for shock value. If there's no reason for that stuff to happen other than look at this puppet doing vulgar things or if you think those things are done in service of the story to tell this noir film to tell this grander film and that it's not just there for shock value personally i think it's a mix i think that there are things that are there just because they're shocking and funny because it's a puppet doing it but i think at the same time having the main character swear having him smoke it's all in service of it being a noir film it's all in service of the story so i don't think a lot of that comes across as trying too hard or just done for the sake of shock it comes across as just you know telling a good story making a good movie uh and it just so happens that it's puppets kind of doing all of these things it doesn't feel forced to me i was able to enjoy it and i was able to really kind of buy in with these characters even with them them being puppets Someone else might come away, and clearly lots of people have, with the idea that it's not funny, that it's forced, that, that they didn't earn any of that, but that certainly wasn't my takeaway. I'm not saying it's highbrow cinema or anything, but in my opinion, they do a really good job of actually building a believable world and filling it with believable characters, some of which happen to be covered in felt. So that's going to do it for Pretty Dece for today. Thank you very much for joining me to talk about the Happy Time Murders. Go check it out, see the movie. I would love to hear your thoughts. This, this is going to be a film that's going to be really, really fun to talk about as everyone's going to have different opinions coming out of it. Uh, but remember that in the meantime, you can support Pretty Dece as well. Any support that, uh, that comes from you guys helps make this show a reality every single day. So if you want the full details, check out prettydeeshow.com slash listener support. Find out kind of how to support and what you get for supporting, including a shout out on this show. Otherwise, head straight to anchor.fm slash prettydece to sign up. Of course, new episodes of Pretty Dece premiere weekdays at 8 p.m. You can find that in the podcast feed on the YouTube channel. Visit prettydeeshow.com slash video for those videos. And of course, you can find me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Just hit me up at Pretty Dece Show.